call a meeting to order for the, uh, um, <coughs> as the vice chair right now, uh, for the uh, Chantel Committee program Wednesday, September 7th. Uh, first item of on the uh, agenda is election of officers. Um, I might need a little help with just sort of Roberts. Helping me along, yeah, Roberts. <coughs> um, do we do, uh, what is there, the four positions? You got the chair, the vice chair, and I Treasurer. think um, I, I, you secretary. have a secretary that's yeah. listed in the bylaw. I, okay. I can't really remember if anybody's actually done. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not been very active. Okay. Richard is it's the me. Secretary. I haven't been active. Richard, <laughs> you what? I, I'm just, I haven't been active. It's, I'm just the secretary, just in case. It's an advisory role? No, no, no. It's just <laughs> in case, you know, you're off for defending the nation. And yeah, I got you. <laughs> Um, do we normally start with the, the, the chair? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, any uh, nominations for chair for a capital committee? Be before we do that, I have a thought. Yeah. It's a very important position. It's someone that needs to be able to interface well with the finance committee. Mm -hmm. I think it should be someone that wants the job and someone who volunteers. So, having yeah. said that. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have two members here to sort of mull through that. But, um, and I don't know, I mean, you're the rep for the right. finance committee, uh, so I don't know if that's a little, if that's uh, uh, a conflict at all. I don't know if that's. I, I, it, yeah. It, what I think would be great is if the chair, which wasn't me, and then sure. myself and the chair can act as I wouldn't mind being co chair. If yeah. that, I don't think that would be a conflict. Yeah. Okay. But it gives two perspective views. I can represent FinCom. Yep. Here, as you used to yeah. say. Yeah, I, I always thought, uh, as the FinCom rep, it wasn't appropriate for me to be chair. Yeah. So um, I wouldn't ask that of you, but <coughs> Chris, is uh, it I would. Uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, I'd consider doing the chair position if you would do vice chair. Absolutely. Okay. We could probably do that. So um, um, do we need to make a, like a verbal nomination? Yeah, so I'll make a motion to. Chrissy Kickham is the chair of the capital program committee. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I'll make a nomination um, for uh, Peter to be the vice chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, and I'd like to nominate Richard as the secretary. Absolutely. I'll second that. All, All in favor? Aye. Aye. This is going swimmingly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All I have to say that was me. I've, do I've dodged the chair for so long. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see here. Second item on the agenda is public comment. Anything, anyone want to make a uh, comment on anything that's not on the agenda today? Um, and I'd just like to make one potent. Just welcome to the Capitol Committee. Thank you. you enjoy it. Appreciate look, forward, that. look forward to your input. Uh, item four on the agenda is discussion of Capitol Committee. Uh, Fiscal year eight, uh, 18 review and timeline for budget process. So, I don't have anything in writing yet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be getting you a calendar, but really, what I wanted to try to get done today is figure out what day of the week and when you want to meet. Do um, you want to do the same as last year, which was Wednesdays at 8 a.m., or do you want to switch that out? And what I expect mm -hmm. generally as a timeline is that sometime this month, probably towards the end of the month, Brian and I will be presenting the board with our recommendations for capital projects for fiscal 18 and then any updates to the long-term plan. Right now, we're in the process of having the departments update the long-term plan. And I think there are going to be a couple of semi-significant changes due to construction costs. Mm -hmm. And I don't exactly know what they are yet, but for example, I heard yesterday that the DPW garage is probably going to be significantly more than we had budgeted. And I know I'm not even remembering exactly what the budgeted number was, but it's something under ten million. And now I'm hearing more than that. So obviously there's a lot of work to do on that particular project. And I'm not even sure if we have an OPM yet for it. So we're gonna need to be working to get numbers down as best we can, but we also have Problems of not budgeting, as a lot of other towns are having that problem as well. In any event, um, I ex 
expect us to give this presentation to the board, hopefully, um, on September 28th, which is the last Wednesday of the month. And then we would have your first meeting the first week of October. We probably the usual, I think we'd give you a general overview of everything, <coughs> and then we start calling the departments in. And that okay. takes throughout October, November, into December. And I um, do have something of a timeline started. It's not finished yet, but I think we would, if it's okay with you all, we would do the same thing as last year, where we go to FinCon. Second-ish second week of um, December with your recommendations. Okay. And then FinCom sort of takes it from there and then um, makes their recommendations for their annual time. Got it. So that's what, that's the, and I'll get you the timeline. Once sure. No, that's, that's, settled that's on a good the start. Date, uh, the day and the time and work in the departments. So what, what do you think? Is, do people like the Wednesday? Does it work, work for you? It works for me. Um, as long as we're not here much past 9.30. But there might be times when I just have to go yeah. or get somebody else. Yeah. I mean, it's fine with me. It was our, I, I can't recall if there was any absent members last year because it was a bad time. I think it did. Yeah. 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 There's only one, one day in a two-month span that I would not be able to yeah. be here. Okay. So Same with me. There's only one. Yeah. Time uh, is perfect, too. Let's see. Okay, Probably so... Keep it. We'll do Sounds Wednesdays good. at 8 and plan on getting into it on, I'm going to say, the 5th. Of October? October 5th. All right. Okay. That's the first Wednesday of October, and that'll be the general overview. And then we'll get right into it. From is, that the, uh, is that the first time we'll get some information, or will you get anything to us sooner? I will try if to get things to you sooner. But you know what? You will have some previews sooner, because I'll send you... Whatever it is we give to the board for their meeting on the 28th. That's so you'll get our presentation. Yeah. And great. then there'll be a lot more that'll come. Libby, is that going to include uh, forward looking or are we looking at also at like status of, of uh, projects that were approved in the last fiscal year? Or I, I just kind of um, curious how you do that. That's a good question. I think you didn't you have a meeting about already approved projects in the status sometime in the I don't remember that. Better remember that. Maybe um, that's a good start. We should set I, I don't know if we would have time, but maybe that first meeting is a general overview of fiscal eighteen and out and fiscal seventeen and back. Sounds good to me. Maybe I was just kind of give that a try. Um, it might be a little bit of a longish meeting that mm -hmm. day, but um, and I'd probably want some of the departments here. But that would give you a good idea, a refresher of what we've already done and where we are with everything. Like that. That's a good idea. It gets everybody off. Yeah. Together, yeah. especially if the department heads can kind of come in and. Yeah. yeah. If I could, it would be just a question about the preliminary meetings. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Your preliminary meetings with the department heads in the budget process on cap. Is there items that fall to the cutting floor? That yes. You, okay. There will be. Do you think it's good that we may, after that, it's not to be involved in, but you can tell us what was cut? Yeah, we can and, do that. I think yeah, sometimes sure. that segues. Maybe your thought is, well, we're cutting this because yeah. we're not going to build that thing out there. It's two years away. Yeah. So it has a, a chain effect. Yeah, that's good. I think that's, we can do that. Yeah, if I may, that, that's actually one thing I want to make sure we include because it seemed to come up at last year's finance committee meeting um, on what items were cut and why. And so I want to make sure, I'd love to just have a, either a separate document for um, the items that were cut uh, and, and why, whether it was funding or, uh, I don't know, any other reason. Just so that's clear, it, it also has sees that we've been through stuff and we've been through a process of, um, you know, weeding stuff out. Well, it, it should serve in a way, too, is that, I mean, a, perhaps a different document would be the inventory, but that's, that process of triage would help to keep, keep
keep in mind for planning, future planning, what items are coming up. I mean, it may be that it's a small number, but it's it's large enough to be capital, but it's been put off for years and years, and all of a sudden, it's imperative that it be done, and we would we would be aware of it, or someone would be aware of it. And Libby probably does this already, but if capital programming is advising on those things, it might be helpful for us. Well, it's just like the, the garage that you just brought up, the DPW garage. As we, a couple of years ago, we said, well, where is all the rolling stock now? Where is the security? Is it out in the open or is it under cover? Yeah. And one of the big things is, you know, you want to, if you're buying new pieces of equipment and you start outside in your life expectancy, so why not at least look at what would it cost to put them in just yeah. a sh you know, cover? Mm -hmm. So I think that segues into future years. Mm -hmm. And if you don't build a garage, you may say, well, then why are we buying something to depreciate twice as quick? Yeah. Sure. Richard, could, may I ask a seemingly dumb question, but can you walk me through the process of how a building gets built by the town? What's the process? Sure. How about the bidding process? Well, I, I want to get to that. Okay, right? so I'm not the procurement officer, but... Um, and so, so it starts with the department. We need a new garage. It starts garage. with the department. So let's just <coughs> take the DPW as an example. Right. They need a new garage. Um, they are supposed to develop some cost estimates that might involve some professional consultation with an engineer or an architect. So we hire someone well, to do that? Well, we don't usually hire anybody at that stage. They might do some, there may be a small consulting fee. Right. Or Is that they, budgeted? Fees for that are budgeted somewhere? Um, there's a professional services budget in almost every department, so they will probably be funded out of that. Okay. I mean, I'm talking maybe a couple thousand dollars, mm -hmm. not, not anything more. These are preliminary numbers. Right. And they would, they're expected to, you know, call around to other towns with similar projects and see what their project costs, design right. and construction. And then we would probably add the Nantucket factor, whatever we think that might be at the time. Um, so they develop their cost estimate and then, okay, so it gets a little bit tricky depending on how big the building project is because you might need design before you seek the construction appropriation or you might do those numbers into one number. So DPW, we did design, um, and I'm trying to remember how much the design was. I want to say 600000 but I could be wrong about that. Um, with, I think, an expected construction cost of maybe around $6 million, something like that. Um, so the costs are developed like that, and then they go, they go through you, and we, we discuss as well, what do you need it for? What are the additional costs that have to do with this building? What are the maintenance costs going to be? What are the utility costs going to be? What are the benefits? Um, like Peter mentioned, bringing the equipment under cover is a mm -hmm. very big benefit. Are there other benefits like office space, or can we use the building for other things? You know, there's there's a, a fairly detailed discussion about what the use of the. So at this point, have we spent the six hundred on design? Um, we are in the process of spending it. We have engaged an engineer and an architect. Right. Um, and so they are working on the design. Kara, I think, has a meeting with them today or tomorrow. Right. Um, and now, are those costs pretty typical? That seems like a large on, number. It well, is it depends number. on how much you think your construction cost is going to be. And so it spins off the construction cost. It does. Cost. It's, it's about 10 percent is the rule of thumb they use in procurement. So in a building of 1.5 million or more, you are required to hire an owner's project manager. Right. And so then you have to get that person on board. And I'm just not remembering right at the moment if we have an OPM for DPW garage or not yet. I think we do, but I'm not. I'm so not that's, sure. that's an individual not on town payroll They're who's hired? They're not on town payroll. They're an independent group. And their fee um, is probably in the range of 5 to 10 percent of the construction, construction cost as well. It gets up there. Now, in wow. some cases, 
we have had existing employees act as the OPM. And that has worked well in some cases, not so well in other cases. Um, there's a benefit to an independent person. Mm -hmm. And they're your rep, so they're the ones who help deal with the architect and the engineer. I'm sure, I mean, you have experienced this with the school project. So we get <coughs> the either the design money up front or the whole shebang up front, and then we, all along the way, you have to keep making sure really that your cost estimates are still accurate, and that's why we may need to be a little more conservative with our estimates going forward so that we don't run into what we're running into right now at the fire station, for example, when we ran into the little bit of the school. Um, there's probably so by conservative, you mean I well, more money. money? Yes. Okay. I probably should have said liberal. Um, <laughs> so, again, depending on the building, you may or may not have other people involved in the design process or helping work through the project once construction starts. If it's a very large project like the school, typically there's a building committee. And that group is picked by the school or the superintendent, I'm not sure who picked it, but uh, Mike probably. Correct, Mike. And it's just, it's, it's helpful, particularly I think in the design phase, it's helpful to have a group like that so that when it comes time to seek the construction appropriation, you have some supporters behind you, but, but also people who understand the project and they've heard why it's needed, what the costs are, what the backup is, all, all that kind of thing. Then, okay, so let's just say we've gotten through design and we've gotten through construction and we feel like we have a, a sufficient appropriation um, and it's already gone to the town meeting. I might be overgeneralizing, but then we would go out to bid, and depending on the project, there are different Massachusetts general laws that need to be followed for, for different types of construction. There's a special law for modular construction. There's a special law for um, horizontal construction. There's a special law for vertical construction. Then there's special laws for projects that are estimated to cost over certain thresholds. And in almost every case, they all require advertising in certain places for certain periods of time, um, with certain posting requirements. If people ask, if contractors ask questions about the, the project, there are protocols with how you answer those questions. They all have to be posted publicly. Sometimes you might need to issue an addendum to the bid documents or the request for proposals. I should back up the time a bit. Depending on the project, you might do a request for proposal or you might do a bid. The bid route is a little less flexible. You are required to pick the lowest, most responsive, responsible bidder. The RFP route gives you a little bit more flexibility because you can establish a evaluation criteria um, that can be used to evaluate the contractor or the vendor. But again, Mass General Law dictates which process you use depending on what you're doing. So you go out to bid, and the bidders hopefully respond, and hopefully they respond within your appropriation, and you pick one, and on how all that plays out, and the OPM helps get everything started and going. You start construction, and in a bigger project like the school or the fire station or this building, there are generally weekly meetings with the architect and the OPM as the as you go through the punch lists are developed and blah, 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 you go on with your project. If there's any money left over, aha. Mm -hmm. um, but it has happened. You can, depending on how it was appropriated, potentially reappropriate it for something else. If it's borrowed, um, that's not so much of an option because it's borrowed for something very specific. Um, but if it's free cash or some other source of funds override, you can potentially be appropriate. Now, we don't have a procurement officer right now. We've been advertising. We had um, somebody we thought was going to take it. We sounded good, but something happened, and he was from off island, and he's not moving on now. So we're out to advertise again, and I think we have possibly one candidate that I, in my 
vacation absence. I don't know if they've got interviews or not. But we're working hard to figure that out. Who was? Wasn't she? Uh, Heidi Bauer. Yeah, was. Heidi. She left. Well, her job. Um, so. How do, how do we do that without someone in the position now? Well, right now, um, it's really d quite difficult. Yeah. Greg, Brian, Greg and Brian are the main people who are doing the procurement. And we're about to get, we have a kind of a informal procurement group with people who've been, who handle the procurements for their departments, and some of them have been certified as public procurement officers. So we're about to get a group of them together and, and have them help with the postings and stuff. There's a lot to the postings yeah. online. Mm -hmm. yeah. Never mind the follow-up with the bids and the questions that come in from the vendors. and. You, you need somebody who knows something about the project to answer the questions. And Greg and Brian know very little about some of these projects. So it's been, um, it's been a, a, a bit of a problem. And that's just projects. There's also activity, goods and services that have to be procured that are a whole other area of procurement activity. So how long has this opening been out there? Um, we've been advertising since July. So she must have left in June. She left at the end of June. Mm -hmm. She's um, so. Yeah. So the things you we, we don't get, you do not see, is when you compare that to the public side, your value engineering on a project is done with cost estimators, not with contractors, not with the yeah. lowest bidder. Yeah. So your value engineering is. You know, throw it in the air, see where it lands. Mm -hmm. I mean, from a public standpoint, on, on these projects, they, the contractor, know what our budgets are. Yeah, that's crazy. It's okay. Yeah, well, well, I can be two percent, two percent higher or lower, and, and yeah. so it's. So, you know, th those are things you, you, we collectively. Um, I hate to say the word lose control, but we don't have that right. control. Like for example, we just we were doing a dormitory project with the club. And we do our value engineering when we have the bidder. And we sit down at the table and say, okay, what can we use for that floor besides hardwood? Yeah. And that's where you can make your savings. Here we don't have a lecture. And that's what was, is frustrating as hell when you're sitting in a school project or a fire department or a business building project and you do your value engineering with Fogarty, who's a cost estimator outside of Boston, who's looking at numbers that are inflated for our purpose. Yeah. But it just it, it leads right to the hand of the contractor. Right. So, so, like so the sewer projects with uh, plowing through sand-based soils is easy peasy. Yeah. You do the same project outside of Boston, you're hitting you know boulders or rocks. Mm -hmm. That's real hard digging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But our pricing is yeah. So, so <laughs> let me just ask a, a quick follow-up. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm extending this meeting. Um, where do we fall down? Where did this committee fall down on the fire? Station. What could we have done better? Um, I don't think you fell down at all. In fact, I don't know that anybody fell down because even as far back as right before the special town meeting in November, we had current cost estimates of within the appropriation. And okay, so should I, I guess so you, when, when, when I hear that Martha's Vineyard did the same building for okay. A, they did Percentage. not do the same building. Yeah, okay. Different building. Cool. All right. At all the same building. Okay. Um, I don't know if you all were aware of it, but the architect and uh, maybe not the architect, the OPM came to a finance committee meeting recently and went through exactly how this came about with the fire station. And if one of you would be willing to be on the um, fire station work group, you'll learn much more about that. But the Martha's Vineyard situation was not. It isn't really comparable. It's not an identical situation. It's quite different. Would their method of construction be worthwhile to look at? Um, I think that is going to be looked at. Correct. But there are other general laws that are going to kick in with regard to the bidding process for a modular building. Um, and, of course, HDC would get right. involved. Um, right. But, yes, it is definitely going to be. And we're doing modular in our dorm. Okay. And I look at that as you can control your facade and you can control your structural. Yeah. 
and you will see your cost per square go down considerably because of the structural behind the facade. And the facade just facilitates HTC. Okay, so you don't think we missed the bar on it? I, if I, if I, mean, I think, I think we, we asked for a specific, we, we the town, asked for a specific type of building. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. asked of the architect to design a building that was right. modular in nature. And when you look at the comparison of the Nantucket building versus what they did do over in the vineyard, their request was for a modular. So it was an apple and an orange, and so was the price. Yeah. So now if you go back to the architect and say, okay, well, we learned from a budgetary you know, constraint, maybe we should. Can you do the same building with a modular construction? So I'm, I'm assuming, because I wasn't in the meeting, that the request may be in this work room. Yeah, uh, they, they've already started to talk a little bit about it, and um, I'm just, haven't been out, I'm not sure how much it's progressed exactly, but I think we're kind of trying to get the work group set up. So it sounds like Richard wants to I'm just trying to get to to this committee being efficient. And, you well, know, you if we miss the bar on that, then I want to know. And going forward, as we look at new buildings, well, I think what's going to drive me as an individual, and from my background, is where I'm looking at the most. I am always going to be driving for the most cost-effective, um, yet efficient way to accomplish the goal. So perhaps, and I know that there's a lot involved here, so don't, don't, you know, overgeneralizing for the sake of making the point. For things like with the sewer, if we know that our numbers are always going to be higher and because of the particular state mandated procurement process, whether it's an RFP or it's, or it's a bid, I would suggest that we come in lower. In a general sense, I'm saying. I'm not saying we actually do that, but that we shoot low because we know that everything we do is going to be a higher bar, that every contractor is going to be um, looking at the fact that they're coming to Nantucket and plowing sand versus moving boulders and Peabody, yet they're making you know 100% more on the project on Nantucket after the Nantucket factor of housing and relocating staff and equipment and so on in their resources. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's a specific example. I'm using just as a broad stroke of how, in my own mind of processing it, I would be attacking it is, how are we getting the most cost-effective yet efficient product and result? Um, and again, that's a gross generalization. I'm not suggesting we go out and we under budget and we do these things because I understand at the tail end, that's going to create a whole bunch of other problems, not the least of which is undermining public confidence and the town's ability to forecast these things. However, we need to keep in mind um, that to some extent that exists already. You know, I don't want to just let that go. I mean, I, as a matter of fact, uh, the chairman of the board was, you know, friggin' this and friggin' that on, to quote him, his words on on how the sewer estimates, or uh, I think it was the sewer estimate recently, that I, I very rarely read the paper, but I did read this one, and there was, I saw Bob the Chairman DeCosta had mentioned something about estimates being off fairly wildly, and there was a department head in looking for some more money or something. Uh, I'm not saying it wasn't justified, I, I'm just saying that those, those are the things that are going to be important to me as an individual sitting here, um, and I hope it can contribute in that way. Uh, Libby, the um, OPM, that contract is drafted out by, I presume, Town Council, and it's set up to subcontract our liability and provide some traction with errors and emissions and so on and so forth through the construction process? There are, um, again, required um, levels of those things, liability insurance and errors and emissions and so on. So they, they all have to have it. This is true. Thank you. Um, okay. Anything else on that, Libby, on the timeline? I, I don't have anything else okay. except unless you guys yeah. do. I think we're all anxious to uh, get into it. And, I, yeah. and I, do, I had some questions on some things about the garage, but we're going to be hearing about it. So yeah. we'll wait for that. Um, we'll move on to item five. Appoint a member of the uh, Capital Program Committee to the Fire Station Work Group. Um, Second, Richard. Yep. When does it meet? <laughs> We haven't scheduled any meetings yet. We um, typically when would it? 
At next week's board meeting, the board is hopefully going to appoint a couple of citizen members. Um, we have a FinCom appointee. Is that, is that you? It's not me. Um, is it Stephen? That was Stephen. Stephen Mori, because he had raised those issues. Uh, yeah. Previous. So there's there's one or maybe even two people from FinCom. One of you, a couple citizens. Um, I'm going to. I think that was it. And one, once this board has uh, appointed the citizens, we'll probably schedule the first meeting within a week or so. But generally, um, when would it meet? I'm just trying to. Um, it's going to meet whenever the committee decides to meet. I like will probably early schedule morning? the first meeting. Um, when do you want to meet? <laughs> no, no, don't put it on me. Richard, are you, are you interested in doing it? I yeah, mean, I'll, if, I'll, if I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. If, if the meeting okay. works. Generally, but, but get your digs in on when meeting time is. You know, you I'd like an early morning, if, morning if, okay, if that's morning. okay. Let's shoot for that. Maybe you're less shot at that. Yeah. Right. So we have a uh, nomination for uh, Richard for the um, fire station work group. Um, we have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, item six, date of next meeting, which I think we got is October fifth. Yep. Is that right, Ruby? Yeah. And we're going to meet through the fourteenth, December fourteenth, or twenty one, or whatever. December seventh. Um, I don't have that. Oh, you'll have I, that. No, yeah. no I will. I will have that. Oh. Um, I'm hoping that we can get to FinCom with your final recommendations um, the week of the twelfth. Uh, okay. So is it the twelfth? December twelfth? No, that's just the week of the, that's a Monday. Yeah. Um FinCom would probably meet either that Thursday the thirteenth or thir uh, sorry, Tuesday the thirteenth or Thursday the fifteenth. And I think what you'd like to do is have a meeting like say the fourteenth, <coughs> because I meet with FinCom on the fifteenth to finalize your report and, and your recommendation. So that's what I will shoot for. Okay. Um, yeah, and if everyone can make the uh, meeting before board selection, that would be helpful. And, and I think, you know, from there, Christy, that collectively we, the committee, should be helping to write and proof and rewrite that presentation so we're all on the same page. I would appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I it just makes I it agree. A easier for Christy <coughs> to make the presentation and, and all of us should be there in support. We did last year. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't have a chance to look at what was going to be presented as a group, as a committee, and it made the committee kind of okay. Yeah. No, I appreciate that, and I, and I agree. Do you, have a, do you want to bring up something? No, no. I, 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 was, I had the old agenda. Oh. So when you said uh, number five oh, for what, the what, what uh, was your number five on that? Well, mine was uh, date of next meeting. So when you said number five to uh, to nominate someone, I, I oh. thought you were ad libbing. That's why I jumped right in. Oh. A second on Richard. You're on point. There you go. <laughs> on point. It worked. Um, so do they think we're all set? I think we're all set. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Good I'll tell you the date. I can't. Make it. It's October 26th. To the Capitol? Yeah. Okay. And mine is the 2nd of November. And I'm the next week. Would you say 26th of October? Yeah. You probably won't meet the 23rd of November. Sure, the day before. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. So, so it's a travel day. <coughs> is it uh, basically are we meeting weekly? Is it? Is it? I can't remember. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll be getting you some. I'll be getting you a more complete timeline with at least a draft of who you'll meet with on every okay. Wednesday. You guys can look it over, and um, if you've got any changes or whatever, just email me back. I'll, I'll email it out. All right. Um, that sounds great. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.